In a prior video, I've shown you how you could build a cryptocurrency price web application in Streamlit by web scraping data from the CoinMarketCap website, which is right here. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how you could retrieve the market price of cryptocurrency directly from Binance using the intuitive API, which will essentially load the JSON data, which you could use to build your very own web application in Python using the Streamlit library. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So this is the code for the app.py of the Binance application that we're going to be building today. And as you can see here, the code is comprised of less than 100 lines of code. And to be exact, it is about 81 lines of code. And you could even reduce it further by reducing the empty lines here. But then for aesthetic purposes, we're going to keep it there. And also we're going to keep the comments in order to allow you to easily read through the code. And so let me show you the web application in action. And so we're going to launch the application, streamlit run app.py. And so I'll provide you the link to the code in the video description, and then you can load it from the GitHub repo. So streamlit run app.py, enter, and then it'll load up the web application as you can see here. So let me open it side by side. Then let's this and then we're going to load it side by side right to go okay so this is the sidebar of the application and you can see here that you could select the price for the nine cryptocurrency that are selected here and when they are selected you're going to see the metrics box as you can see here so each metric box will comprise of the ticker label like for example the bitcoin and busd and then the corresponding price and then the price change as you can see here indicated by the colors if it's going up or if it's going down it's going to be in red and then it's going to be in percentage and then aside from the selected price it's going to also display all of the price of the binance market and then you could sort the data here let me show you you could sort you could click on the price change and then you could sort the data from least to greatest or from greatest to least and so you can see here that the price change is shown here and also the price change percent is shown here so you can see that x TZ down USDT has undergone a minus 33.36% price change. Or you can see that the up here is undergone 37%. Okay. And so let's have a look at the corresponding code line by line in order to see how the code is made up of. And so at the top part of the code here, you can see that we're importing the necessary libraries. And so in this application, we're just going to import Streamlit and also Pandas. And we're importing it as ST for Streamlit importing it as PD for pandas. On lines number four through six, we're going to use the st.markdown function in order to display the markdown syntax. Particularly, we're going to use the hashtag, which will be representing the heading one label. And it is the Binance price app title here, which we also made it bold using the two asterisk symbol. And then it's corresponding to here. And for those of you who like to have the dark theme, let me change it initially here. You can click on the top right panel here, click on the settings, and then in the theme here in the drop down, you can select dark. All right. And so this is going to save your eyes. And so let's continue further. And so on line number five, we're going to type in the description of the price application here, which is right here, a simple cryptocurrency price app pulling price data from Binance API. And on line number eight, we're going to use the st.header function, and then we're going to make it bold, and then we're specifying it to be the selected price as shown here. And then the following line, line number 11, we're going to import data by using the pd.readjson function from pandas in order to read the API data, which is in JSON format from the Binance API. And so I could show you here that if you copy the link here and then you open it up here, you're going to see the price. Okay, so it's going to have the symbol right here corresponding data in JSON format, like the price change price change percent, weighted average price, previous close price, and etc. And so the data is going to be shown here. So this is the entire data frame from the API. Okay. 
So you could select any particular column that you want to display in the metrics here. And so in this particular example, we're using the price change right here, price change percent, which will be displayed at the bottom of each of the metric box. And then the price, this one, we're going to select it from the, let's see, from the weighted average price. Okay, so it's right here weighted average price right here okay this column just this one okay so let's continue to the top again and lines number 13 until 19 we're going to create a custom function that will allow us to round values according to the following conditions so if the price of the cryptocurrency has a value greater than one we're going to round it by two decimal points but it if it has a value less than one which is going to be in the else condition we're going to make it round to eight decimal places so for example the dogecoin is going to be in eight decimal places and if it exceed that then it's going to have the scientific notation here okay but if it's exceeding one you're going to see that the price here we're going to round it to two decimal places same for bitcoin as well and ethereum because they're all greater than one and matic as well okay so shiba dogecoin xrp are less than one and therefore it's going to be round up to eight okay if it exceed eight it will be displayed as the scientific notation here and then we're going to define ST columns in order to make three columns for the ST.metric box here that you can see. So it's going to be column one, two, and three. And so let's proceed further. Lines number 23 until 32 is going to be defining the sidebar for the price selection. And so if you click on it, you can select any price that are of interest to you. But then the default here, is specified right here the default value is specified right here and the df dot symbol will be all of the symbols okay so all of the symbol right here df which is the particular data frame here and dot symbol which is the symbol column so it's going to display all of the symbols in the symbol column as you can see here all of them okay and then this is going to be the label of the selection box which is right here price one so you could change this to any other name of your choice and it will be updated here okay and so notice that in order to make it into a sidebar you're going to use st.sidebar okay because if you make it st.select box then the select box here will move into the main panel okay and so let's proceed further lines 34 until 43 so here we're going to define the variable names co1 underscore df until co9 underscore df so each of these will correspond to each of the metric box that we're going to display here for the nine of them and so the same thing applies for lines 24 until 32 as well for co1 until co9 so they are the selection right so whatever is selected here will be updated in the box here okay so here we changed it to mda btc and then it's updated here and so whatever we select here will be assigned to these variables like co1 selection or co2 selection if we select a different symbol okay and so the value will be updated here and so if we say we select mda btc then co1 selection will then become MDA BTC. So it's going to look like something like this MDA BTC. Okay. So if you're curious, you could even type it in here. Co1 selection, save it, and then let's see where it goes. Right here, MDA BTC. Okay. So this is using the magic command of Streamlit. You could also do like this st.write so that you can see what is the value that is being output by the variable. So this is recommended when you want to dissect the code and you want to figure out what each variable means. So you could just print it out and then you could see the corresponding value of the variable, right? So if we have code two, let's save it and then it's going to be updated here, BNB BTC, all right? So let's proceed further. Let me delete this. All right, so let's do the same. Let's type in st right co1 df. Let's see what it has. Okay, so it's the particular data frame of the MDA BTC, which is the first selection here. So it's the entire data frame, right? Right here. So it is the data frame here, df, but then we're performing a conditional selection. So we're defining the condition that if the symbol column, it will be equal to the selection 
variable. So whatever we selected here will be replaced here and then it's going to apply the conditional filtering, meaning that whatever we selected in the select box here, we're going to display only the data frame for that particular symbol. And as you can see here, for that particular symbol. So if it is code two, it's going to display the corresponding data frame of only the second metric, which is BNB B2C. Okay, so let's continue further. And so in lines number 45 into 54, we're going to apply the custom function, which we have already defined earlier on lines 14 until 19. It's going to perform conditional rounding of the values. And so let's type in the values of co1 price by using st.write co1 price, save it. And then you can see that the values of the price will be displayed here. Okay, and so let's continue. Lines number 56 until 65. We're going to assign it to the variables co1 underscore percent until co9 underscore percent. And so essentially we're going to select the value from the price change percent column, which is shown here in this column. And so we're going to do it for all of the nine variables. And then we're going to use the F string in order to combine the string of the percent and also the variable values of the price change. And then we're going to change the data type of the price change here to be a float number because it is comprised of several decimal points. And then we're using the F string in order to combine the variable values together with the string because we're combining a data type that is a string and we're combining a data type which is a floating number and so in order to make both combine successfully or concatenate successfully we're going to use the f string and so we're going to make use of each of these variables here soon in the metric box which we're going to describe further here so line number 67 until 76 we're going to define the metric price box which is shown here the nine boxes that you could see and so we have a total of three columns as you can see here so the first column will be here co1 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 and the second column which is right here co2 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 and the third column is right here, code three, code three, and code three. And so we're gonna use the nine selections, right? Code one until code nine underscore selection, which is the first input argument. And this will correspond to the symbol here. And then the code one price will correspond to the price right here. And then the code one percent will correspond to the percentage here. And if the price goes down, it will be displayed in red with a down arrow. And if the price goes up, it will be displayed in the green color with a up arrow. And so you can see that the three values coming from the variables that we have defined above, which is here, co1% coming from lines 56 until 65, co1 price from here, 46 until 54, right? And then we have co1 selection until co9 selection, which is coming here, lines 24 until 32. So all of these variables that we had defined earlier will be used in the metric function in order to make the metric price box, as you can see here. And then on lines 78 and 79, we're going to display the header of all price together with the data frame, which is coming from the DF variable. And in lines 81, we're going to display the credit using the st.info function right here. And it should be noticed that this particular data frame will allow you to sort values if you click on the columns, right? You can sort it by ascending or descending order, okay, for all of the columns. So this comes in handy when you want to analyze the price of the cryptocurrency from the Binance market. And so if you're finding value in this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit on the notification bell so that you will be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science and please enjoy the journey.